So today we're going to be fitting some sequential indicators on the car and we're also going to be fitting this dash cam that's sponsored by Vantru. They're sponsoring this video. Um, but also we're going to be talking about a dark secret that my Golf GTE has. In fact, it's not just my Golf GTE, all Golf GTEs have this secret. But more of that in a second. But first, let's talk about what we're going to be doing on the car today. So today we're going to be fitting those two bits in the car because the current indicators, the OEM indicators are just not up to standard. That's the indicators that are on the um, mirror. And then the dash cam, I'm a bit of a sucker for dash cams and um, this one was sent to me to test. So we'll have a little test and you'll see what it's like, etc. But of course the main meat and the thing that you guys are tuned in for is to find out about this issue with the Golf GTE and why it exists. So we're gonna be exploring that to the full. But first of all, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is the bodywork on the Golf. So I have a body shop lined up, or I did have a body shop lined up for it, but it's gonna take a while before that is um, gonna happen. So fortunately, someone who I knew very well and went off to um, Saudi Arabia, did he go to? Anyway, he went off down to the Middle East to paint airplanes, would you believe? That's how good this guy is. Well, he's now back in the UK after um, deciding that it was just too hot. So he's got his workshop back open and he's offered to paint the car for me. And then someone else came back to me who I originally wanted to and now says that they can do it and they can do it this week. So, I think Wednesday or Thursday the golf's gonna go off to get the bodywork done. So that's the sill repaired and also the rear sill that's gonna be sorted as well and painted as well. So that will complete the golf for now from the bodywork side of things. Then we can really concentrate on the mods. So today we're just gonna do a couple of things just to get it sorted and you know. Um, start the mods going because now they're going to come fast and thick so let's carry on right so we've got a couple of things that we're doing today here's the first one we're going to be installing this dash cam from uh, Vantru now Vantru I've been watching for a little while and they do produce some really fine products and this product here the T3 camera it is supposed to be pretty good I'm a sucker when it comes to dash cams because well let's face it they sort the men from the boys when you've had an accident and you can't prove it this is where your dash cam comes in and i've had a number of minor not, well actually i've had a crap i'm not going to say it because you know what's going to happen but it's always worth having a dash cam and this one is pretty good the box has the instructions in here which is almost kind of iPad S or Apple S the way that it's uh, put together good quality manual um, in English and Chinese if you speak it but what I was most impressed about is the fitting kit it comes with two different kits uh, one is a straight on um, cigarette lighter but the other one plugs into the OBD sensor Okay, now the camera is a super capacitor camera. Now what that means is that it basically stores power when you turn on the car and then it releases it very slowly. So if someone bangs your car, it can record that activity. And that was one of the things that I do like. It also has a screen on the back so you can do all the basic settings so that you don't have to use your mobile. And that's handy as well, though I'm not a fan of having screens on while you're driving because that could be a distraction. But we'll see how we get on with this one because I think the screen does go off. As well as fitting the van true, we have ourselves here some indicators. So these are slightly better than the stock indicators. In fact, they're a lot better than the stock indicators. These are the old sequential mirror, um, uh, the sequential mirror indicators. The standard ones that come are shockingly bad. They light up, but only if you see it at a certain angle. Whereas this one, we get that sweeping effect, so it should go across like that. 
So we'll see how we go with this. I mean, they're very easy to fit. And I got this from Alibaba, so it was cheap. But hopefully it won't look cheap when it's on the car. Let's go and fit them. So the kit does come with some tools. It comes with a ply to get the wing wheel out and also a Torx kind of Allen key so that you can take out the um, screws, which is good really. So you've got everything that you need to do. So we're gonna crack on, we're gonna take this cover off. The first thing you need to do is obviously take the mirror off. You need to prise it out from the back, but be careful not to split it. Then after that, we can then push this out and then we can get the indicator out. But let me show you what the indicator looks like normally. Can you see it? No? All right. Can you see it now? Still can't see it? How about now? Yeah, you see what I mean? Pathetic. I mean, if you're gonna see those indicators, you need it to be dark. Let's see if the new ones are gonna be better. Okay, so once you get the cover off, you've got two uh, screws down here, torque screws. They are a T9. Now, you can use this tool that they sent. Um, I'm gonna use mine. It's much more comfortable. So you literally just unscrew those two Torax there, or Torx. Here's one. And here's the other. And then once you get these off, it is just a case. Here you go. That's the second one. It's just a case of unplugging this here and swapping out. As simple as that. I don't know about you, but that looks much better, doesn't it? Kind of looks very stealthy. Excuse the white scuff mark. We are gonna get these changed soon. Right, let's see what this looks like. Now look at that. Oh, I must say that looks much better. And that uh, sweeping effect is perfect. But even if it wasn't doing that, it's the fact that it is so much brighter, it really does uh, make a difference. Now, compare this to the stock. All right, it's the other side and it's in the sun, but still, you'd think that you would see that. Yeah, terrible, isn't it? Right, let's take the other one and then we'll compare again. Again, let's take a look and you can see, you can actually see it. Same side, what a difference. And of course you get that nice sweeping band and that of course matches the rear lights which also sweep across as well. So perfect compliment really. Right, so fitting the camera, really easy. It's just a suction cup and then it's got a USB-C uh, connector. You then feed the cable up through here, through here, and then I'm gonna feed it along here. Now the beauty of this cable, as I mentioned, was that it's got a, a, an OB-Do, OB-Do? <laughs> OBD2 connector where it picks up its power which makes it nice and convenient that way you don't have to sacrifice your cigarette lighter and have a trailing cable coming up here you can do a much more professional fit as we will demonstrate right so let's get this cable fitted to make our installation look a little bit more professional what we're going to do is we're going to take off this side panel here so we can have a look and see exactly what we're dealing with and also it means that we can run the cable and um, feed it up through here. And also the good thing about the Gulf is that it's OBD connector, 
which is this pink connector here is out of the way so you don't see any cables or hopefully you won't okay so here you see me actually using my tool to uh, hide the cable and the good thing about this kit is that Vantra actually provide you with uh, one of these I'm just using mine because I've got them and it's convenient but they actually provide you with one so you can hide these cables truly hide these cables and make your installation look truly professional and that is it a truly professional installation with no cables showing and that's the effect we wanted now how does the camera perform so setting the camera up is really easy it has very clear instructions that even a novice who has absolutely no technical background can set it up and follow through the instructions including setting the time and setting the various different options um, it has a slightly higher resolution as well, so I think it's something like 1524 by 1400 or something like that, like that. and um, that's going to give you very crystal clear. I've got it set at this moment to the very highest resolution, and as you can see, it is very clear. And then of course it's got a motion detector, you can see me wandering in the front of the car there and that works very well as well and um, because it gets its power from the car it means that it will come on whenever something happens including people moving in front of the vehicle will it drain your battery well i've had no problem so far but if i do i will let you know right so mods done now let's talk about this thing that the golf gte in fact all golf gtes are hiding and to help you to understand we need to just do a bit of a history lesson so the golf gte is part of the gt lineup which is the top of the range in the golf model hot hatch series so the top of that range is of course the mighty golf r now why i never bought a golf r well it's exactly the same as the s3 other than the body that's stuck on top they have the same running gear the same engine in fact my s3 is the facelift s3 which has the e triple engine the latest e AAA engine which is pushing out 310 standard bulk standard which is what the Golf R pushes out the Mark 7 Golf R pushed out 300 brake horsepower then of course you've got the GTI which is the next in the range we're not going to worry about the Club Sport and the Vosbon model because those are special editions we're just looking at the base models okay so the Golf GTI that comes in at 226 brake horsepower now the Golf GTI is the grandfather of all hot hatches. It's the model that Volkswagen have always produced no matter what Golf that there is, which kind of makes you think, what's the point of the Golf R? Because if you've got a GTI, anyway, that's another video. The next in the range is the GTE, and that's 204 brake horsepower. And then heading up the rear is the Golf GTD. Um, should we be speaking? about Golf GTE, after all it's uh, diesel. No! 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 Nope, we won't mention the Golf GTD. You know, Volkswagen and diesels. Okay, so that's your history. Now let's talk about this dark secret. It's not a dark secret, but it is a secret. So the Golf GTE has two engines, as you know, the petrol engine produces 150 brake horsepower the electric engine produces 100 brake horsepower now put the two together and the GTE should be pushing out 250 brake horsepower so why does it only do 204 well it's all to do with politics let me explain so the Golf GTI is the special one. I think I'm a special one. That's the flag bearer. Yes, you've got the Golf R, that's the peak power monster of the range, but the GTI is the flag bearer. That's why you've got all these different special editions like the Club Sport, whereas the Golf R is just a Golf R. So with the special one, you can't have another car that's ahead of it because it no longer is a special one. You can imagine that. So Volkswagen obviously had to make sure that the Golf GTE was the car that was behind the GTI. And what they had to do in order for that to happen, they had to detune it. You gotta be kidding me. 
I mean, could you imagine what that meeting was like? You know, the meeting where the guys, the engineers had finished the GTE and they had this 250 brake horsepower car and they came into the VW exec and broke the news to them. Yeah, so we could only slow it down to 250 brake horsepower. Yeah, if I could have been on a fly on that wall, huh? Not a good meeting. So how did Volkswagen get rid of 54 horses to get the GTE to sit behind the GTI? Well, they mapped out the extra performance. I know, yeah, it's terrible. So what they did was when you press the GTE button on the car, the car basically, it tells the computer, or the computer tells the car or reduces the power in the electric motor to 54 horsepower. So when you're running in GTE mode, most of that power is being delivered by the petrol engine. So you've got 150 brake horsepower kicking out there. And then the electric motor contributes 54 brake horsepower. Hence, that's how you get your 204 brake horsepower. And by doing that, it meant that the GTE would sit comfortably behind the GTI and thus not affect GTI cells. Brilliant. However, we know a way around that. You see, when you remap a Golf GTE, there is two options available to you. You can put a race chip or something like I normally do on my cars and that will increase the performance on the petrol engine. So the petrol engine will start to kick out 185 brake horsepower and then that way you get a combined of 239 brake horsepower. Perfect. But the electric motor is still inhibited and in the fact that the electric motor in standard mode pushes out and pushes that car at 100 brake horsepower, in fact, 104 to be precise, um, we're still not utilizing that full potential when we're running in GTE mode. And um, for those of you who think, well, maybe Volkswagen did that to preserve the gearbox, it has the similar gearbox that's in the Golf R. So the Golf R, which pushes out 310 brake horsepower, that gearbox can take it. The DSG gearbox on the GTE can handle it. Plus, if you've seen the drive shafts on that GTE and how heavy they are, it is definitely built to handle the load. So that's not the issue. It literally is to make sure that it doesn't go faster than the GTI so as not to affect the sales. So option one, like I said, race chip. Option two is to remap it. And that's the path that I'm gonna take. So at the moment, I am speaking to three partners, two of which are in the Netherlands one is in the uk and it's about trying to find that balance because we want the car to be reliable that's the most that's the highest priority but we also want that additional power so the additional power that we're looking to achieve with the car is around 285 uh, brake horsepower but more importantly the car will kick out about 500 newton meters of torque which is more powerful than even a golf r it won't beat a Golf R because it will take off faster and then a Golf R will come back, but it will certainly wipe the floor of any GTI. And for me, it's that driving experience. And what the rear map also does is it turns off stop start as well so that the car, the engine is always running. So you've got that peak power all the time because a lot of GTE owners, although I haven't found this to be the case myself, have complained about stop start kicking in when you're in GTE mode. Now at the moment, when I drive the car, it is great. The torque is brilliant. And I'm not quite used to the torque yet. So it's still a novelty for me, but that will wear out soon. So that's the reason why I want to get the car remapped. So next week, the car will be getting the bodywork done and then hopefully it will be back for the following week. And then we're going to go for the remap. So once I've had a clear understanding of which way to go on the mapping, and as so many of you guys have said to me, why don't you get your car remapped? Well, your wish is coming true. We are gonna get the car remap. So that is it. That is the little secret that the Golf GTE has. And you know, Volkswagen are just one manufacturer that does that. 
Um, a lot of other manufacturers do exactly the same and with hybrid cars coming online manufacturers do need to be careful and that's why they do this they're not trying to hide something VW aren't doing anything underhand here it's just to make sure that they're preserving the model lineup and ensure that there's a clear choice because us the customer we do get confused sometimes and with us transitioning into the electric stroke hybrid era Obviously, they want to make sure that you understand the model lineup. So that's the reason why they do it. Good. Okay. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. It's been a little bit different to what we normally do, but you know, going forward, we've got lots of stuff that uh, is going to be happening on, on these cars. It's just one of those things where you get that low moment in between doing jobs. So next week, hopefully we'll um, get the car and we'll be doing something else and uh, I can give you some a clear idea of which way we're gonna go on a remap. In the meantime, don't forget to press that subscribe button here, click the bell notification, so you're notified whenever we release a new video, and we will see you next week.